Photosynthesis converts sunlight energy into chemical energy, which can be used by biological organisms. Some of this energy is used to power herbivores and their predators. But a lot of plant biomass remains uneaten while the plant is alive. Instead, it decomposes in the soil. As you can see in this table, many decomposers are bacteria, actinomycetes, and fungi. Among animals, nematodes are probably most numerous. In this video, I'll focus on mites, which are perhaps the second most numerous type of animal in certain soils. This figure shows mites as numbering perhaps 10 to the fifth per square meter, which is 10 to the ninth per hectare. Similar numbers are reported in other sources. Like most invertebrates, mites have an R-selected life history, which means they generally have short generation times and lots of offspring per female. Unfortunately, this means most offspring die, perhaps painfully, very young, and even adults die painfully not long after that. This source reports that mite mothers may lay 1 to 12 eggs at a time. Some have lifespans of maybe a year, while others die within a few months or less. The next sources that I'll show seem to be more for plant mites rather than soil mites, but they provide some additional data points about mite life history in general. This video shows what I think are mites, perhaps white mites of some sort. If you think these aren't mites, please let me know in the comments. These are filmed with a Cronova USB digital microscope. You can see the magnification scale used based on this picture. These mites are from a worm composting bin that a friend of mine has. I scooped them out of the bin with a piece of paper and then blew them back into the bin after I was done. It's unfortunate that my friend has this composting bin because aerobic composting allows for large populations of soil invertebrates, which means lots of suffering. But I can't convince my friend to abandon worm composting. My friend actually has two worm bins. One is more mature and has lots of worms. The other is newer, and the worms haven't established themselves yet. As a result, the second bin is exploding with mites, which you can see in this picture here. This is a picture of the side of the worm bin. As we saw before, the screen of this video is about 8 millimeters wide, so its area is probably about 8 by 8 or 64 square millimeters. And based on this video, there seem to be on the order of 64 mites in the shot. So that's roughly one mite per square millimeter which is about 10 to the 10th mites per hectare. Next, I'll show footage from inside the worm bin, where you'll see huge numbers of mites. Finally, you'll see footage of earthworms as well. Sometimes mites are on the worms, and occasionally the mites on worms get hit against the soil as the worms pass through.
So as we've seen, composting creates tons of bug suffering in the form of worms and mites, also flies, beetles, and so on. But if composting is bad, what alternatives are there? Here are my best guesses so far. For one thing, it seems good to avoid creating food waste in the first place, assuming the cells and bacteria in your digestive system are less sentient per unit of energy extracted than are the bugs in a compost pile then eating food is better than composting it. Thus, I recommend carefully monitoring the food in your fridge to make sure it doesn't expire and go to waste. The main way in which this policy might be bad for bugs would be if crop cultivation reduces so much bug suffering that wasting food is still net positive, but I'm currently doubtful about that. Secondly, if you do have food waste, the best way to dispose of it might be to wrap it in an airtight plastic bag or other airtight container and throw it away. By wrapping the food, you prevent bugs from getting in, unless there are already bug eggs laid on the food. And by preventing air from getting in, the sealed bag or container will become anaerobic, as a result of which decomposition will be done mostly by bacteria or other non-animal life forms. Assuming you care less about bacteria per unit of metabolism than about invertebrate animals, then decomposition by bacteria is less bad. One consideration with anaerobic decomposition is that it releases methane, which is a more powerful greenhouse gas than CO2. But I'm currently quite uncertain about the net sign of climate change for wild animal and future suffering, so it's not obvious what to make of this point. A third option is to use a sink garbage disposal system like Incinerator, if you have one. In this case, the food particles end up in the water, and they're probably eaten by some aquatic organisms. But if the water is mostly kept anaerobic, the result should be similar as putting the food in a sealed container. Plus, some wastewater treatment facilities can use food scraps to produce biogas. However, this blog post claims that most wastewater plants don't generate electricity. Instead, the organic solids in wastewater may be landfilled or burned. From my perspective, burning is a nice endpoint for food waste, because then not even bacteria are needed to eliminate the stored chemical energy in the food. Landfilling is typically anaerobic, and so is the next best option. Plus, as the blog post notes, some landfills may generate energy from the methane emitted by garbage in landfills. If your sink water drains to a septic tank rather than a wastewater facility, then your food waste decomposes under your yard. This decomposition seems to usually be anaerobic, but perhaps even aerobic decomposition is mostly done by bacteria rather than by animals. I'm not sure about that. Finally, the worst option from the perspective of bug suffering is probably to compost the food scraps using bugs the way that we saw my friend did in this video. Another argument against composting is that the resulting compost increases plant productivity when applied on a garden or lawn which creates even more food and thus even more future bug suffering. In contrast, food scraps thrown into a landfill are less likely to support plant growth. Organic waste in wastewater might contribute to eutrophication, although the sign of impact of eutrophication on the suffering of invertebrates is unclear. Finally, not only does worm farming create lots of bugs, but the process can be violent. For example, here are some sources discussing ways to control mites in a worm bin.